what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel today we have a new deck list video for you guys today as you guys can see on screen we're going to be playing a double blue Aiden deck here and what's interesting about this deck list it's not a control deck list in terms of the way that green works this is a mill control deck list for you sick people out there who enjoy mill this is for you guys we did get a request last week to go ahead and make a mill deck using hera it's a little bit harder to go ahead and do that because it's a lot harder to kind of control the board with Hera Blue, but I'll go ahead and showcase this deck list because it's easier to control using Villainy Blue and then you use the mill to ruin your opponent's life and make them sad. So that's essentially where we're going to be going over today. If you want to check out the deck list, it'll be down in the description below. And again, we'll go over the deck list. We'll show you guys a matchup. It's actually going to be going up against my Hera Blue deck. The issue is that this deck is really, really good against mid-range deck and other control decks against aggro it does struggle so don't go into a match thinking you're going to be able to mill out an aggro player every single time it's most likely not going to happen but again it's still a deck that you can play if you enjoy playing mill if you're like sick in the head and stuff like that but that being said let's go ahead and talk about the leader here we have Aiden the reason why Aiden is really good like yeah you can go ahead and use Krennic for this but Aiden is just better because whenever a unit is defeated on your opponent's side, right? You can go ahead for an action, heal up uh, HP from your base, so a consistent healing on your side. And then on top of that, while she's out as a leader unit, she comes out shielded. She's only a 4-4, but every time your opponent's unit is defeated, heal one from your base. And you're going to kind of see that I kind of made a mistake going up against this deck because I was just trying to focus on the opponent's deck, not getting controlled, and then things kind of went sour real quick like, and we'll kind of see that later on. But again, we're going to go ahead and play a 30 HP base with Aiden because you need to have as much HP as possible to make sure you live as long as possible to control and mill your opponent's deck. So keep that in mind. 30 HP base doesn't have to be Capital City, can be Dagobah, Swamp. It doesn't really matter as long as you have 30 HP on your base. You can go ahead and rock this deck. Now, we're going to go ahead and hop into the deck list here. Again, if you're sick in the head and you love to play mill, this is the deck list for you. It's not going to be great against aggro, but still... It's still a mill deck. We have Viper Probe Droid. It is a two cost. It's when played, you get to look at your opponent's hand. It's just good to have hand knowledge, especially when you're trying to control your opponent. That being said, also a two drop for three, two uh, with three, two is actually not that bad. So Viper Probe Droid, pretty good there. We have Del Miko. It has restore, allowing you to heal up your base more when you attack with him. And then each event your opponent plays costs one more so it forces your opponent to try to take out Del Miko as quickly as possible because they don't want their events to play like cost more to play so that's why Del is in the deck there also again restore good for a control deck we have the death trooper the death trooper can go ahead deal two damage to a friendly unit and two damage to an enemy ground unit it's good to go ahead and use it to clear up your opponent's units that are living with one or two hp left so that's pretty good there we have Cellblock guard a sentinel prevents your opponents from attacking your base again allowing you to kind of stay on the board longer and this is one of the main cards in the deck the person who plays this deck says you really want to get this card out in your first hand not obviously not going to be played the first turn but getting this in your first hand or before you have four resources because everything in the deck is a vigilance card for the most part other than cell block guard and the i am your father and the probe droid right but most of the cards are vigilance units so when you play it you reveal top uh you feel up to four cards in your hand for each card revealed this way put an experience token on this unit you can go ahead and make childson a six six sentinel for the cost of four really really strong in this deck it provides that protection to your base that you really need early game so if you are playing as aggro and you can get this out you could potentially if they're not a bunch of saboteurs you could potentially live to the point where you can flip the game so this card is very very important for the deck only 15 ground units we're gonna go ahead and hop over to the eight space units we play in this deck and we have the infernal four it's very good because when played look at the top two cards of your deck put them any number of them on the bottom of your deck or the rest on top of your deck in any order so this allows you to get the cards that you want to see each turn because it happens when played and also when it's defeated so you can go ahead and use a death trooper to pop it if you need to do so to be able to cycle through your deck and get the cards that you want to make this deck work at any given time right so in front of four very good very needed in this deck we have three distant controllers 
When defeated, you may give a shield token to another Vigilance unit. You can go ahead and give these to uh, Lieutenant Charleston. Really good. And then even if you want to protect Del Mico and stuff like that, it's also good. Your Inferno 4, but although you want your Inferno 4 to get defeated. But you really want to try to get that on Lieutenant Charleston or Del Mico to kind of keep that control thing going, right? And then the final space unit we play in this deck is the Avenger. We play two of those. And again, when played, your opponent chooses a non-leader unit they control, defeat that unit, or on attack, do the same thing. Now, it has to be a non-leader unit. But other than that, this card for late game is really good at controlling the board and kind of making it so your opponent have nothing because you're going to be using an event. I'll talk about that later. To clear the board, obviously you guys know what I'm talking about. And then you drop this down, you can have a little bit more control of the board continuing going further. So Avenger hunting the Star Destroyer is just really good. Hunting Star Destroyer, right? So now we're going to go over to our events. Let's showcase those onto the, the screen here. A lot of events. We have 24 events. These are all control events and they are there to make you sad, your opponent sad. So again, if you're sick in the head and want to make your opponent sad and mill through their deck and do all these things, here we go. We're hopping into them. Make an opening. It's really good. You can potentially take out units with the minus two, minus two, but also being able to heal the base for two damage is really good. Again, prolonging and keeping you healthy for the long game. We have power to the dark side. Very, very good because if your opponent only has one unit, even if it's a leader unit, it has to go or at any point they have to kind of choose between a couple of good units and it's just a really good card. Blue villainy always should play this card at a three of most likely. I am your father. This is a great card because Either you're taking out something or you're getting those three cards. In this deck specifically, the three cards could be massive because you can get a ton of removal or draw into something that you really need. It's just really, really good. That's kind of what this deck wants. It doesn't really need it for the removal aspect because there is a ton of removal in the deck. It really needs it for the draw power. Now, if you're playing against an opponent that knows that, they're most likely not going to let you get the draw power. But again, still a really, really good card. Even you can just take out a single unit. So still really good. This is the big mill card, okay? Vigilance. Choose any, choose two in any order, right? It's heal five from a base. You get to, again, heal your base and prolong your HP. You get to defeat a unit with three or less remaining HP. Still, more removal on the board. Give a shield token to your unit. You're never going to use that, most likely not in this deck, at least. The big kicker is what makes this the mill deck is the discard six cards from an opponent's deck. That is huge because you're using this card mid-game, late-game. Being able to use three of these in a game and make your opponent discard 18 cards off the deck is absurd, right? And it can, re and again, you're controlling the board throughout this. And you're going to really see this in the matchup. Vigilance plus being able to remove stuff from the board gets to the point where your opponent no longer has any cards in their deck and they have no units to play. It's rough. Vigilance is the main piece of this mill deck and what makes it a mill deck, right? Search your feelings. Again, a card that you can search for any card in your deck. You can get anything you need at any given moment. Very, very good. Very needed. Take down. Defeat a unit with five or less HP. Really good. And then the same thing with Vanquish. Defeat a non-leader unit no matter what the amount of HP is left on it. So it's really good. And then the board wipe. Super laser blast. You need it in control decks. It just is what it is. When you hit eight resources and you clear the board, it really sets your opponent back. And then you just start controlling the board even harder from there. And then the big thing, Entrenched. Three. I like to do this with my Thrawn deck. Entrench on your opponent's units and you have no ground units or you have no... They just they can't attack the base. It allows you to live a little bit longer. It's really good in control decks, just being able to protect your own base. So that's what we're rocking with here. It's again, it's a mill deck. It's, it's not going to be great against aggro, but against those mid-range and late game other control decks this could be the deck for you if you join mill i personally do not but here we go we're just go over and hop into the sideboard here nothing too crazy we have count dooku darth tyrannus comes in shielded and pops a guy with four or less remaining hp again being able to control the board drop this down also five damage into your opponent's base if you need to do so is never a bad thing if you need to go ahead and switch this in. If you're playing against other control decks, this is where the sideboard comes in. This is like, hey, the sideboard's here for other control decks. But we have the System Patrol Craft. It just has Sentinel. Also good against uh, aggression space decks, like decks that spam a lot of space units. 
go ahead and protect yourself in space for a little bit. We have the third Avenger here in the sideboard. And then we have Devotion gives your unit Restore 2. Again, against other control decks, it allows you to kind of survive a little bit longer and outpace them in terms of like gaining back HP, right? So if you're playing against Krennic, who has Restore 2, you can give one of your units Restore 2. So that's kind of what we're seeing here with the sideboard. Again, Mill, not my favorite, but I know that people do enjoy Mill and just want to see it played here. We're going to go ahead and hop over to the match for you sickos who enjoy Mill. So... I'll be right back. All right, now we're here showing off the mill deck again against Hera. Now, Hera is not the best deck to show off how great the milling deck could potentially be because Hera is not like a crazy great deck in its own right. But with that being said, it is a mid-range deck and you're going to kind of see how the control works against these mid-range and long uh, control decks. So again, if you're playing against an aggro deck, the mill deck might not be as crazy, but again, you're going to see, at least in this matchup, in the fact that it's a mid-range deck, you're going to see just how the control deck works, right? So, we're going to start off. I have initiative to start, and my pain and suffering starts right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and go up and get off my chopper. My mindset is get rid of things off the top of his deck so he can't use things against me. So, that's what my plan is. I know that against control decks, I need to get damage on the base as quickly as possible. So I go ahead and I play out Chopper. And I get my initiative and he passes. Because I cannot risk giving up the initiative to my opponent. So I just grab the initiative. Even if I had another one cost to play, even though I don't think I did. It's just I would never go ahead and do so. I play Fleet Lieutenant. I get to attack with my Chopper there. And I get to see if there's an event card. It's not an event card, so that's pretty bad. Because if I had been able to go ahead and exhaust a resource there as well, it would have been good on my side. But again, we're coming up empty. All goes. He elects to just take the initiative. And at that point, I can't do anything against it. I'm just going to, you know, grab the pass here and then... Because he knows that if I have initiative, I get to go ahead and control the initial move. And that's kind of how it works, right? So he takes the initiative right off the bat. It's a good play on his part. And he is for four going to go ahead and just take down Chopper. Because again, I'm going to use Chopper over and over again to try to get rid of his stuff. I swing into his base for three. Again, trying just to keep up the momentum as much as possible. It's just... <laughs> I, I try. I try here. He goes ahead. He heals up the one because Chopper was taken out. I am now going to go ahead and play out my Guardians of the Wills here. He swings into my base for two. It's not defeated, so obviously he doesn't get the effect, but still he's doing damage to my base. At this point, I should just go ahead and grab the initiative, but I'm trying to get damage on the board here, so I'm trying to determine whether or not to play a Jedi lightsaber on my unit here. Again, it's... I should have grabbed the initiative, right? Because I'm trying to keep on that pressure because he's probably going to have Vanquish. He's going to have Takedown. He's going to have these things. And that was a bad misplay on my part there. It's just, again, I want to get off damage as quickly as possible. We just go into the next turn here. And again, I kind of played into... Yeah, I knew the Vanquish was coming, so I just went ahead and just grabbed it right away. So that's kind of bad, again, on my part. But now I power up my other unit because he can't go ahead and use the resources to do so. So I'll still be able to get that five attack hit on the base. I probably should have saved the Jedi lightsaber for this. But again, I'm dealing five. He's going to go ahead and deal two. Again, just trying to keep that momentum on my side going. Trying to get rid of as much HP as possible before his unit comes out, heals up stuff. I'm going to go ahead and play Ezra. And... He's going to go ahead and take the initiative. I'm going to go ahead and pass. And again, I'm losing the initiative battle here. But again, I need... He has 15 HP on base. If I slow down even a little bit, we're going to have a problem. So I need to go ahead and hope that... Obviously, he can't take out both my units here. I have six resources now. So I can go ahead and take out Hera if I need to go ahead and do so. But again, having Ezra on board here, he is going to take him out again. The threat to be able to play something off the top of my deck is really good here. And again, I should just attack with the Fleet Lieutenant, so I go ahead and do that. Get off another 5 damage on base. He is going to go ahead and heal up another damage. I'm trying just to keep up with the 
healing of his deck replay and i cry so i have to keep luke on top there again i can play luke next turn no 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 i'm dumb and i was like wait a minute i can actually play luke here so that's my bad i almost fumbled that completely but again he's out of resources here at this point i should go ahead and just take initiative but he does take initiative so then he, oh, no, he does not take initiative. He entrenches Luke, and that's where things kind of go bad, because it's just entrenched. And I should have probably grabbed the initiative, but getting out Hera here, I just, again, needed that pressure. Getting off another four damage onto base is pretty good here, and then I'll give Luke a plus one, plus one. It is what it is, but you're seeing that he's also able to go ahead and take the Iden out here, and then I have to go ahead and I have to swing into his base here. I have to get damage on his base. Again, I probably should have gotten rid of the shield there, but again, I have an entrenched Luke that I can go ahead and try to take out the Iden. He's going to go ahead and swing into Hera. Deal four there. I'm going to go ahead and take the initiative. Now I have the initiative again, and I can figure out from here. At this point, my play should, no matter what, be using Luke to get rid of Iden. But I don't think I do that, to be honest. I really should have, but I don't think I did. Oh, I, I swing Luke into Iden. Okay, I was going to say, I don't think I do it, but here we are. So I get rid of Iden. I heal three off my base. And now Iden can't heal this turn. Even if he entrenches something, at least I got rid of his leader and his ability to heal this turn. So. At least with Iden. So he goes ahead, make an opening, and he swings into Hera, taking out Hera, healing two off his base. Still healing. I go ahead and I swing for five. And we're, we're five HP away from finishing off this game. So we're, we're not doing terrible here. And this is where it all goes downhill for me because I have no units in my hand. So I can't really do anything really crazy. I do have a unit in hand. I have uh, Guardian of the Wills. I thought that was no unit. But Guardian of the Wills comes out. I don't know why I... Because, again, he grabbed the initiative. I know that the shield does nothing. But I really wish the shield kind of stopped things from being played on him from your opponent. That would have been awesome. But here we are. I have game on board. He had to grab initiative or else I would have won. So here we go. This is where things kind of take a turn for me and I get really sad and want to cry all the time. So his obvious play, if he wants the game to last a little bit longer, his play is to play the entrench on my fleet lieutenant. So that's essentially like I can no longer swing for game at this point. And now we're just kind of in a sad time. So I go ahead and I play the forces with me. I'm swinging for four. And that's what sucks because I'm one HP away from taking him out. Oh, no, no, six HP away from taking him out. Getting off that to leave him at five. I keep thinking he's playing 25 HP base. He's not. But again, I'm close to taking him out there. And he has enough to now vanquish my stronger unit. And I cannot attack his base with any units here. So at this point, he healed. I take the initiative. I have to hope for something because I, I have no other units to play. And he's in a really good spot because if I play a unit next turn, he super laser blasts. He has the Avenger coming up and all that stuff. And this is where the mill game kind of takes over. So again, going further, I'm probably going to play some type of way to get rid of and like upgrades on units in my sideboard i think that's the way that most decks should probably have it's like a backup plan for control decks because entrench on your unit can become a problem but now we're just kind of like in a stall fest here we're in a slug fest because i have to kind of figure out where i want to go from here and he goes ahead and he plays the avenger i'm gonna go ahead and take out my luke so now The thing is that he has the Avenger on board. He's just going to go ahead and use it to attack. And I'm going to go ahead and play Strike True. I'm going to deal damage over there. And I'm able to take out the Avenger. He's able to heal one. Again, I grab the initiative here because I don't want him to be able to play another thing to... 
Uh, I was thinking about playing the, uh, I forgot to actually put the card down. But he's like, how are you doing that? I, I forgot to put down the card. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, how, how are you doing that? I was like, oh, wait, here we go. Uh, you're my only hope. And then he takes the initiative. Again, another misplay on my part. I probably shouldn't have done that. But again, I was trying to cycle through and trying to get to a point where uh, if it was a unit, I could have had the unit on board to start next turn. But again, it's it's hard uh, at this point in the match. I had Luke in hand, which is another reason why I did it. Because if he plays something, uh, he now this is where the mill starts, right? He heals five off of his base. And mills six cards off my base. And those are all my small units. I wasn't drawing any small units. Because if I could have flooded the board with small units. I would have been in a little bit better place. Because as you see he has no. He has no. What was he? Uh, Super laser blast in hand. So if I was filling the board with small units. I would have been okay. Yes he has entrench. But it is what it is. It's not the end of the world. But. He takes the initiative. And I can't do anything at this point. And now I have Obi-Wan on board at least. Obviously, you see the entrench in hand. It's just I'm trying not to get wrecked here. It's the entrenches that really kind of slowed me down. I was 6 HP away from taking out his base, which I could have done. But the entrenches is too much. So, again, if you have people who play control at your locals, put Confiscate in your sideboard or something like that. So he deals 3 to Obi-Wan here. Which is completely okay. I mean, it deals two to Obi-Wan, I mean. So I, I go ahead. I take the two. And I have to get damage on the board. Damage on the board. So I swing into the base for four. And then... Just try to keep it rolling here. Now we see the... Another... Vigilance, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, he takes down Obi-Wan. It's a good play because now I can't go ahead and give two experience. Now I just have a really big fleet lieutenant who can't do anything. My fleet lieutenant can attack into his death stormtrooper, but it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and play Luke to go ahead and take care of it. And then he goes ahead and he entrenches Luke right away. And at that point, I'm pretty much not able to really do anything. He's, I've seen all three entrenches, but... I need to draw a Luke right now to go ahead and kind of take advantage of something. I don't want to play down any more units because if I mean anything in my resources, because if I waste the cards in my hand, the mill, I just can't come back from it. So here I go. I can't attack his base because of all of the entrench stuff. So here we are. Just trying to count up my resources. Obviously, I have seven resources. I'm going to go ahead. For one, let's bring out Chopper. Trying to draw him into something like maybe getting rid of Chopper if need be. But he plays four, he plays another Vigilance, he heals, he, he kills Chopper, and he mills stop. So he doesn't even need to heal because he, I have no threats. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and there we go. My deck is looking real thin here, and we're not looking great. But he uses removal on that so i can go ahead and get the ghost out and potentially get some damage out there he's gonna go ahead and heal one i go ahead and i take the initiative and now at this point i can go ahead and deal five damage to his base but it doesn't really matter if he has vigilance in hand he can just heal it right off and do all this stuff all over again bring me down to no cards in my hand i mean in my deck and it's just again it's 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 a time like if you enjoy these types of decks and you like to mill at your opponent and something like that i just couldn't break through once the entrenches came on my stronger units i could not really do anything about it so it is what it is he just goes ahead and he takes the initiative and this is another fumble by me i play kanan because i was like oh he doesn't have entrenched and i completely fumbled because i didn't take into account super laser blast and so I put out Kanan, put on the Jedi lightsaber, and I was like, okay, this could be pretty good. And then in my head, I'm like, wait a minute, super laser blast. And I just fumbled. Because if I was able to go ahead and live this super laser blast here, right, he'll take, he'll heal three, right? 
And I knew it was coming. I knew right away when I did. I was like, wait a minute. I just I just threw the game away. Because at that point, I could have played down Kane in this turn, gotten um the Jedi lightsaber on it next turn, and like, you know, I could have done seven damage to his base. A big fumble on my part. I just was not thinking because I was like tired. I was just tired of playing against the deck. And this is what the deck does. It just Again, you see power of the dark side in his hand. I just take the initiative because I'm like, all right, I want this game to be over. So like, I just, I'm just kind of done at this point. And here we are. I draw two Kanans. I can't put down any of them. And so, yeah. This is what Mill does. Mill makes you kind of just like frustrated to play against it. No, and again, if I did not throw Kanan into a sleeper laser blast like a moron, and I could have just gone ahead and attacked with the ghost. Then got... Like, again, that was the biggest misplay of the game. I didn't need to put down Kanan. I could have grabbed the initiative. I could have... Oh, I wouldn't have had the initiative, but I would have taken the Super Laser Blast to the face. The ghost would have been gone. I could have played Kanan. And then the following turn, possibly, used him to attack. And then, yeah. It just... It is what it is. This is what happens when you play against Mill. It's the Vigilance, he takes it out. Mill's top five cards in my deck. And uh, there's the deck. So I have one card in hand. So yeah, I just scoop there. And uh, because I have no cards in deck, I have no cards in hand, no units. That's kind of how the game ends. If you like this type of deck and you're kind of sick in the head, definitely go ahead and check the description down below. You'll get the deck list and make people sad. Good for you. Uh, I just showed off this deck list because someone requested a Mill deck and this is kind of what you're rocking with. Again, against aggro, this deck kind of crumbles. But again, against long game decks and mid-range decks, this deck can kind of, you know, keep up the, the sad times just pretty much. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and hop over to some giveaway information and then we're going to say goodbye. So stay tuned for the giveaway information. All right, guys, for an upcoming stream, we're going to be doing a giveaway and the giveaway components, I guess you could say, are just going to be we're going to be building a budget deck list online uh on a stream but with as many foils i can put in there and as many hyperspace and hyperspace foils i can throw in there for you guys so that'll be given away but a, as a bigger piece of the giveaway we're also going to go ahead and throw in our admiral akbar big card just for you guys it's cool if you guys don't want the budget deck list i understand but again the admiral akbar card is cool and it's a cool little showcase put it in a frame put it on your wall it's kind of cool i have an avenger and a boba fett as well that i'm gonna put on my walls but i wanted to give the animal Empire to you guys so again as a thank you to all of you guys because you guys have shown me extreme and amount of support that i am so appreciative of but also the last person who won the giveaway he finally sent me what he pulled because he was saving it for a sealed event type of thing with his family which is awesome so i'm super glad he got to enjoy the box but not only for himself but with his family as well but I'm going to show the stuff that he sent me in the picture up on the screen here. He got a showcase Cassian from the box I gave him. A Boba Fett, a Luke, a Command, a ton of hyperspaces. He got Jedi City foil, but still, you're my only hope foil and stuff like that. But that's what was in his box. And yeah, I could have had that box myself. I could have had a showcase Cassian. Cool. But again, I want to do my best to give back to you guys for all the support that you show me. So again, thank you to all of you for all the support you've shown me on all my videos so far. I'm going to keep up the good work as long as you guys continue to support. And the more support I get, the bigger giveaways I can go ahead and do in the future. So again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.